Hello, Dumelang, San Bonani, Molueni, and a warm welcome to the Maths Genius Video Tutorial Series brought to you by SABC Education. In these tutorials, we help you unleash the mathematical genius in you by showing you key mathematical concepts and how you can master them for success like a true genius. So today we're going to be looking at how we can use the difference of two squares principle to solve quadratic equations. So assume that you have uh, an equation that says x squared minus y squared is equal to zero. So in this case, you have a situation where you have a difference of two squares and it's an equation that is equal to zero. So we can factorize the left hand side so that we can be able to solve the linear factors of this uh, difference of two squares. So by rule, you know that x squared minus y squared is equal to x plus y, x minus y, right? This is a rule that exists, which is called the difference of two squares. So what you have to do now is that you're going to substitute that with this right-hand side. So x plus y, x times x minus y is equal to zero. Now, from the axioms of mathematics, you know that if any two numbers are multiplying each other and the product is zero, that means that one of the two should be zero because that's the only way you can get a product of zero. So I'll just state the, the, the statement. If A and B are such that A times B is equal to zero, then one of them is equal to zero. Meaning that A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. So this is the rule that states for the multiplication to get a product of zero. So every time you multiply two, two or more things and you get a product that is equal to zero, then you know that one of those things that you multiply, one of those factors, is actually equal to zero. But we don't know which one, which of the two is equal to zero. So that's why we're saying A or B is equal to zero. So in our case now, we're going to say X plus Y is equal to zero, right? Because this is one of the factors. The other factor, or X minus Y is equal to zero. Now, because we want to solve the equation, Let's find the value of x, right? x is equal to taking y to the other side, negative y, or x is equal to, if it goes there, positive y. So that means that your answer, x is equal to plus or minus y. So you have actually solved this equation. Now, this was generalized because I was using x and y. What about if we have actually a real value for y? Let's do an example where we say x squared minus 16 is equal to zero. So in this case, they didn't write it explicitly that it's y squared. You have to know that 16 is a perfect square such that you'll be able to use the difference of two squares. So we can rewrite this equation as x squared minus four squared equal to zero. Because we know four times four will give us 16. So now, based on our rule, we know that x minus four, x plus four equal to zero. Someone might say, how come here you set it the plus and then the minus? And here you set it the minus, then a plus. It's because Multiplication is commutative, right? If I say two times three, it's the same as saying three times two. So the order doesn't matter. Addition is also commutative. Two plus three is equal to three plus two. 
So it doesn't matter if I start with the negative or the positive, as long as both factors are represented. So it's always important to remember the commutative property of real numbers uh, under addition and multiplication. So in this case now, because of our rule, we know that if two things are multiplying each other and the product is zero, then one of them is zero. But we don't know which one, so we're going to say x minus four is equal to zero, or x plus four is equal to zero. Now, taking four to that side, x is equal to positive four, or x is equal to negative four. Therefore, x is equal to plus or minus four. So you have actually solved this quadratic equation using difference of two squares. But if you remember very well, you will, you will know that the difference of two squares applies for all differences, two differences that, are, that have even powers. So let's say it was x to the power of eight minus four to the power of 10 equal to zero. We can be able to apply the laws of difference of two squares because we have even powers and a negative sign. So in other words, we, can, we could write this as x to the power of four, right, squared. Remember, power of a power. So four times two would give you eight. If you look at your laws of exponents, you'll remember you're seeing that. Minus four to the power of five, squared, five times two will give us 10 as well. So in other words, we're saying your difference, your squares is the square of x to the power of four and the x of four to the power of five. In other words, we can now write this, x four plus four to the power of five, x to the power of four minus four to the power of five equal to zero, right? and then you can continue and go like that. So, this rule applies for all even powers that are subtracting each other. So in other words, we're saying we can extend this rule to be x to the power of 2n minus y to the power of 2n, where n is some natural number, right? Is equal to zero, so you can apply it because you're saying any power that is even, it should be able to work. So thank you very much. I hope you've learned a lot with uh, solving quadratic equations using difference of two squares. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Unleash your mathematical genius today. If you have any maths questions, you can post them for free on www.mathsgenius.co.za or email them to info at mathsgenius.co.za.